Hello everyone. Right, today I'm introducing you to some digital drawing. I'm using Martina. Martina's photos. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to basically sketch the out outlines. Take out what we need and I'll show you as we go along. These are the imported photos. We can turn these off, on and off. Oh, got plenty of pencil. But we can t turn them on and off as we n need them. I think probably keep that one at the top. Sorry, that one. Um, yeah, and this is just an introduc introduction to Procreate as well. That's uh, the digital program I use for for drawing. And to be honest, I've become quite attuned to it. Uh, I prefer it over traditional artwork now. So you'll probably see me using this a lot more if you you look at any of my posts. This is basically your drawing pad. You can add as many layers as you want. Draw on that one, it won't affect the other pictures. These are your pencils. I usually go with technical pencil. Um, but I wanna try HB today and I'm hoping this I'm not sure if you can see that, but the saturation, um, there we go. We can change this up and down to make the pencil darker and brighter, which I'm hoping will work like using 2B pencil 4B and all the others as well and this is your the size of of your pencil you can change them as you go along this is like smudging your pencil and this is obviously the rubber so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna shift that picture there over and then I'm going to make sure what I'm doing is in shot of the camera. Because it's pointless doing a drawing if you can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> to make that bigger. And from there. A mistake I think a lot of people make, including me. Is um drawing over the picture, and you you want to make sure you're on the right layer with that. So let's get started. I'll draw underneath the picture because that's that's what I can see on the camera. Um, quickly check to see how that looks. Turn the opacity up a bit. And make it a bit bigger to start off with. Yeah, that'll do. You'll see how I'm, I go along with this and how, how use I've got to um, drawing with Procreate. It's, it has become my favourite tool. What we can do here is we can get a feel for how the, or I should say how Martina's face is um, shaped. It'll look a bit daft at first, but you'll see as I go along. 
where it changes, where things are fixed and what is ending up where just check that's on the right line what we want to look at is our measuring points and what I mean by that is bits like the eyebrows here, how they're shaped. See how that comes down there? It shows you where that part of the nose is, that part of the mouth is, and so on. And you can basically do that with every point on their face. So if you can get one bit one bit right, one bit that you're comfortable with, it that you know isn't going to be changed. Um, you can build a picture from there. Check to see what size of rays is on. And I'll be honest, as I've used Procreate more and more, um, probably over the last two years, I've actually preferred it to traditional artwork because it's so easy to use. But the downside is the... Um, Equipment is so expensive. I'm not going to deny that. This tablet wasn't cheap and now it's outdated. It needs replacing and I haven't got the money for that. But you use what you've got. That is one thing I've seen from my mum over the years since I was a little kid. Is mum used to draw on anything. If she's got a spare bit of wallpaper, she'd draw on that. I don't know that I want this looking exactly like Martina because I'd be, to be honest, if I was concentrating on making it look exactly like her, I'd have to put a lot more rails in and this is basically a sketching, sketching um, video. And to basically show you what it's like to draw digital. I mean, speaking, speaking for myself, I prefer digital, but there are a few downsides to it that I might, might explain as we go across, or I might explain it in um, in this lesson. And I suppose the main one about digital drawing is it's so easy to cheat. For example, somebody who doesn't know how to, how to draw very well could pick up an iPad Pro. If the, Let's say they're rich. They could pip, pick up an iPad Pro and basically get this image and trace over it and what I've seen other there was somebody else I'm not going to name names but all they are doing is taking photographs of a certain person a very popular person and using Procreate to turn a photograph into what looks like a painting and uh, I don't like that personally I don't think people should be doing that because it's it's making others think that 
they've done that painting when in fact they haven't. But I suppose it's everybody to their own. And if I think about think about it, it may be a good way to learn to draw. So you could basically get used to these bits. But you can see as I'm going over Martina's face here that it would be so easy for me to basically trace. And I don't want to be doing that. But that is a way you can learn. It's a, a way you can learn perspective where different parts lie. But I think once you've learnt that, abandon it. Abandon it and go on to your own drawing. The reason I do these bits here is because that is, it's how the skull lies. The holes um, where the eyes sit. If you can learn the bone structure, um, here would be the nostrils. If you can learn all this bone structure, you can basically, in the end, if, especially if you've done a lot of drawings of it, you'll be able to see that bone structure as you're doing your drawing. And it'll help you determine what actually lies where. Like I say, I'm not too bothered about this looking exactly like Martina today because it's, it's a sketch to show you some digital artwork or digital sketching and maybe on another session we'll concentrate on a picture of Martina because she's She's so easy to follow, follow the different lines of her face and her body. Now I'm lucky, I've asked um, her permission to use the pictures but you can find pictures on the internet stock images are the most important ones to remember and that's probably something I'll repeat a lot because you can't you can't be sued for drawing them Another thing I like to do when I'm drawing, you can't actually see that there, is draw a little box like that. Really, you don't need to do this. You can bring up the colour in the top corner and it will bring it up, but this is just how I do it. And by doing that, that I can now swap from the colour white to the colour I was using. So for example, if I tap that, it'll swap it to white. 
turn the saturation down by well, to probably 25%. That'll do. Go a bigger brush. I didn't set this up very well, did I? Just to go over that. Because then what that has given me is a basis to follow, but I don't have to do it exactly. So what I'm, I'm going to do now is add another layer on top of this one of saturate this down a bit. So I can go over the top. I think what I want with this picture is one of her eyes. So I've got the two corners to follow. See, we all make mistakes. <laughs> One thing I like about Procreate is you can press two fingers on there and it'll undo what you've just done. So if you make a mistake, it's so easy to fix. Am I on the right pencil? Yeah. Yeah, This is basically, I think I've said this already, but it's an introduction to just to doing some sketching. And the digital side of it, which if people have been stuck on traditional art and they've, like me, they've got boxes full of drawing pads, but they like the idea of some digital, doing some digital art then um it's basically to show you what it's like it's so like i said earlier there my my biggest problem with digital art is there is so many ways of cheating and I don't like that. I don't think it's fair that um, certain artists spend hours on a picture and then um, other ones spend about five minutes making it look like a, a photograph look like artwork. Maybe a bit longer than that. Um, but making it look like artwork and then claiming it's theirs. I just don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair on genuine artists. But you'll be able to see in the videos that I don't do that. I don't cheat. Because I don't like it. I have to keep... Coming out and zooming back in again. Oh. 
once we've done this bit we'll be able to start probably the other eye let's shift that over a little bit we've already got the line there to Um, give us some indication. Now we've got that, we can measure the eyebrow. And on um, digital artwork, don't worry about putting these lines, the perspective lines, in to help you because you can you can take them off easy enough. The end of the pencils on these have a habit of falling off of, or unscrewing and then they stop working. See I can already see that that should be over there. What I'll do in another video is I'll take you through the different pencils, razors, and basically explain Procreate um, better. It's my favourite digital art program. I've used um, Adobe. Adobe Photoshop, that's another alright one. Art Rage. There's a few out there. But that shouldn't be there. That should be there. Zoom in. See this is what you can't do on um paper is literally zoom into the last pixel and at the minute I um, need my eyes testing I was due to have them done but my epilepsy took over and I couldn't have them couldn't have them done but by it, being able to do this on digital artwork it fixes a problem I'd also say if you've got a problem with certain areas of a, a face or a body, draw it, draw it over and over and over again. I don't think there's an artist out there who would say they're perfect on every part of the single bo uh, human body. I have a problem with teeth. I do make them look really stupid. <laughs> and I've actually got a picture of pinched off Martinez that I want to draw. Um, she looks absolutely beautiful in it and it'll make a nice drawing. But she's got a mouth open. <laughs> and I'll show you something else you can do. Let's put this eyebrow in like that. And this is literally impossible on... Um, 
traditional art, you wouldn't be able to do it. It it means using the pencil eraser. There's a little box at the top of the iPad. That one and that one. What we're going to do, we're going to use that one. Now you can shift that any way you like. So if you put it in the wrong place, you can bring it down a little bit. You can even change the size of it. I'm just looking at the space in between where that should be. The eyebrow should be more down there, shouldn't it? You have to be careful by doing that, this kind of thing though, because by doing that you're then messing up that side. So I'll take that off there. What I'll do now is measure that side. So like I say, I don't want this drawing perfect today. It's just... Sketching, this is, this is what it's like to sketch on the iPad. You can see me doing things on her that you just wouldn't be able to do on traditional artwork. Because, yeah, that looks totally wrong. Totally wrong. And if it was my mum and she would draw this, she would tear that up. <laughs> but <laughs> you got to persevere and learn from mistakes. I mean, yeah, I've got a habit of doing it. I was doing a drawing of Elvis for a friend over in America, and I didn't like it. So I went like that over it. <laughs> you can't see what I'm doing, can you? I don't think the camera's in the right place, is it? For next time, I'll make sure that is fixed in a better position. But you see um, where I've gone over the top there? The one underneath it, you can just turn it off if you want to. Because that looks silly like that, but when you turn, actually turn that lower layer off, it looks a bit better. And I can see a bit where I've missed. Which is alright, so I'm going to zoom in and get that done. The other day I did a digital drawing, a little bit like this, just sketching, and um, I'm working on being able where to, where to put the shadows in the face, and it turned out all right. But I was I'd started off with the pencil. Um, can't show you when I. Zoomed in like this, but I started off using the pencil on here and swapped over to the ink. You could you can choose the equivalent to 
the pin and it um, shaded it really well. So I was happy to find that the other day. I think this shows also that when you're drawing, um, pictures can look absolutely terrible, like you, not photographs, the, the drawings can look absolutely terrible, out of place. But if you keep an open mind about your drawing and think, well, all right, that needs fixing, that should be over there, you can you can learn to appreciate that nobody gets everything right even the professional artists I think they tell you that that nobody gets it completely right not all the time anyway What I do is I'll look at this corner here in comparison to the picture. I found this way of drawing by um with the perspective lines because I could never draw faces. I was useless at it. My brother's the one who drew faces and he, he did a really good job. My mum drew animals. She brought me up um, drawing animals. Which I want to do on one of these lessons. I, I want to do a bar now. And another good way you can work out um, can you see, yeah. all these shadows here around the face and this one here is an important one is turn that picture black and white if you can and they'll stand out more that area there is quite important I keep drawing with parts of my hand I don't intend to Yeah, I'm sorry I haven't posted many videos in the past week, but my epilepsy has been really bad. It's uncontrolled and there's nothing I can do when it kicks in. Just have to put up with it. Let's see how that looks now with the back. That looks alright, doesn't it? It looks like... Mm, I'm looking at the nose, wondering if that should be further down, whether it should be 
more like that. One thing I always do when I'm I'm drawing is study, study whatever I'm drawing, and by that I mean in in your mind's eye looking at all these different lines, literally every inch of a, and those bits there, see where they lie. See where you'd put the perspective lines. Those ones there, down there. How they work, how each piece of the face works in relation to the other part. The lips here, you can see that one goes a little bit further up. It helps you appreciate what you're drawing, who you're drawing, and you get, rather than just looking at the picture, thinking, oh, that's a beautiful woman, you look at it and study it. And study where everything sits, everything lies, and how each line works in relation to others. I dare say there there would be times where people would look at me and think, "Oh, you're just perving at a picture," <laughs> when in fact it's studying. I can't overemphasize how much I like Procreate and do slow artwork. It changes your perspective of drawing completely. I mean, yes, I can still do traditional artwork, but there are so many downsides sides in comparison. You can still cheat with traditional artwork. Just like you can with digital. I just don't like, don't like cheating. Look at where these bits lie. It makes it look older than what you use when I, I do that. Makes you look like got these old <laughs> old lady wrinkles. I'd never get a picture of Martina right. She's she's just too beautiful. I would say if you can turn the sound up because I noticed on one of the videos the other day that I posted it was getting my words wrong the automated captions they were coming out wrong so I could actually be saying something that the 
captions change. Zoom in on that one. If you can spend a bit of time studying the picture, work out what lines you want where or something like, for example, this is a mouth, obviously. You can come away from the picture and place those lines, then check afterwards. You do it often enough and you'll find out you're actually learning. And that goes with pencil drawings as well. Take out some of these, take out them. See, when you zoom out, that just doesn't look right. As you're moving bits around like this, um... it'll look wrong and then you put it in the right place and you'll think yeah nobody ever gets I don't think any artist would tell you they get something absolutely perfect I certainly don't You'll see me doing this, my hand will come away and I'll be staring at it thinking that looks terrible. What should I put where? So excuse me if I do that. Sometimes I'll spend like 10 minutes drawing a mouth and then think, no, that's completely wrong, rub it out. Yeah, put the pencil there. I think I said this once before, this is the most important line of the mouth. Because you can literally go like that, picture this on a blank piece of paper.
go like that and you can work a mouth from that that's more like a comic book a mouth but ah <laughs> using the rubber I have to be careful when I do these videos because normally when I make mistakes I'll say words I shouldn't be saying <laughs> at myself. Which is fine if it's just me, but on public videos I can't be doing that. I wonder if um, putting the outside of the face on will help. Bring that back up. What I'll do here is I'll um, hopefully put that in the right layer. Yep. And I'll change that um, with this layer off. Because what this will do is it will give me a another way of measuring where things should be, how they should look. Um, If you chose to use perspective lines, because obviously it's your choice, um, but if you chose to use them, over time you'd be able to put all these lines in your mind and without drawing anything, see them. If that makes sense. That is one thing I don't like is if you go like that on um, Procreate. It starts turning it like that and I don't like that. Because you'll find yourself doing it um, by accident. See, I'm not happy about this mouth and nose at the minute. So I would much rather pull myself away from from doing something that doesn't seem to be working at the time. Concentrate on another part of the drawing and come back to it. One thing I can't do with 
digital drawing either is used to pencils which I do like to start off a drawing with because you can throw these lines all over the place and work from there Sometimes it works. <laughs> That's a dark bit there. Now I'll use this opportunity to show you the um, show you that. I'm going to undo this in a second, but you can turn that down so it's not and it's way shade in the face, which does work if you don't just throw yourself at it like I've just done, it does work. You see these lines there, if you put two or three lines where a line's going to be, like this part of her cheekbone, you can choose which one out of those lines looks right, and then just take the other off. See, what I'd, I'd do with this layer is I'd do exactly what I did with the other one. Um, and that's put another layer on top of it. Go over it again. And um, do more fixing until I'm comfortable with it, which I'll probably do with this one. I like this picture of Martina, she, she looks really nice in it. You can see all the, all the f facial lines where they should, should be and there's good light in it as well, which always makes a difference. Mm. Shouldn't be there. Looks better there, doesn't it? You can take that out like that and if it still looks wrong just press your t two fingers on there and it'll bring it back for you. This is by f <laughs> no means done. I'm not happy, um, not happy with it, so I'll probably do this over a few sessions, I may even come back on, on here with the camera going so you can see the progression, 
I think with the next video though I'll I'll take you through the ins and the, in in excuse me in and out of all the different things on Procreate. If you've done part of a face that looks right to you, like for example, I want to draw a shoulder next, that would come that way, um, which would catch a chin. So I'd probably measure it from there. A chin and a hair. That bit there. Still not happy with that man. <laughs> I could do better. Excuse me if you hear me breathing, by the way. Um, I've got asthma as well, so... I make funny noises with my breathing. That isn't how that is going to stay, that bit of the arm, that is just a guideline. So a lot of that isn't seen, but it's good to use it to to get these creases let's go to this side I 
I don't think there's a lot of people out there who would be happy to spend days on a drawing. Um, even just a sketch, to be honest. But I do like to spend my time so I can get it how I want it. Nearly swallowed them. Someone asked me once, why do you just draw women? When they they saw my artwork. And I think if you look at the female form in comparison to the male form, there's just a lot more elegance to the female form. It's a lot better than... I mean, in my mind, than drawing a bloke. It's like um, the pictures that Leonardo da Vinci... I'm not comparing myself to him in any way. But Leonardo da Vinci he drew a, a lot of... A um, lot of women and... He obviously drew men as well, but I th think with his female paintings, you can see a lot more for form in them. It's easier to work out um, this sort of shape, you can see to the outside of the body. There's just so much more elegance. And it it just looks better. For me anyway. I used to draw a lot of um, angel pictures and they were nude figures and I just <laughs> I found them so easy in comparison to the ones I did of Elvis because there was so much more being able to To measure up up these bits with it's just so much more easier it's just appreciating the the body is a work of art rather than just a body. I'd put these in here because I 
sometimes you'll you won't be able to see them but you can just make them out in the photograph there more ways to measure it up and then what I'll probably do with this picture is um Probably leave it to another video that I do. And then correct, put what's called a layer on this, another layer, like I did earlier on, and go over it again in a lot more detail. So the bits that I don't like I can fix and I want to try using the um, pen as well what I might do before um, I post the next video is take this photograph turn it black and white and it will be able to point out what sits where if I stick it next to it. Is that chin too big? How I normally draw women is I'll get the basic, um, where can I do it, the basic stick figure that whatever you, whoever you're drawing in, in the position they're in, like that, then I'd zoom into their face, and before anything else, get the face fixed. Because the last thing you want to do is put a lot of detail into all this body just to find that it doesn't work in comparison to the face. You've, the face may look a little bit too small or a little, little bit too big. If you can fix that first, fix the face, get the basic... Um, shape to it like you can then start measuring the body in comparison and get the body right This isn't Martina, this is just a generic drawing example. Pulled off a lot of pictures of uh, my team and didn't know which one I was going to draw today until I started. But this one's alright, I think. She knows how to pose for a photograph and does it in a really good way. And I will say as well to some of the people, whoever takes photos have done a, a really good job. Because I do a bit of photography myself and I know you have to have an eye for light.
So yeah, they've done a, a good job as well. That should be thicker. rub that off because I'm going to try posting this as the first picture that is on the video so I'll get that stuff out of it there and you can see there we've we've basically got the the shape I'm not sure the shoulder this shoulder over is right but we've basically got the shape to it using the different perspective lines now when we come back on here we can go over that with uh, probably 25 to 40% white layer in saturation I mean and that will cover the majority of it up and then what we'll be able to do is going really close and get all the details done better and correctly and take out all these lines that we don't want in there and fix that mouth that is my mistake and I, I need to fix that That's alright though, isn't it, for a sketch? I think. I'm, I'm alright with that as a sketch. As a full drawing, I wouldn't be happy with it. This is a problem I have when I do a sketch that is going to take more than one day. I have a problem stopping because I start looking at bits and thinking well that should be there let's just stick that in and I think it would be a good idea to um not put too much detail in this background but turn it dark it'll help these bits here stand out all the lighter bits to her hair it'll help them stand out and I like personally I, I like drawings that have got a dark background that is one of my things with drawings but I think what I'll concentrate on is um for the next videos is I'll first show you the basic layout of of the um procreate the different things it can do because if I pull this down here you can see there are so many different pencils if you choose each one of these they're all basically covered in different pencils and to be honest that can be overwhelming I find it overwhelming even now And it's the same for your smudging and your rubber as well. So I'll explain those, go into those a little bit deeper in the next 
um, video and like all the different what I would call bits of paper but the different layers and what these are for over here that's basically to help you get the picture in and adjust it and And yeah, we'll go from there and I'm hoping this picture of Martine will turn out alright. If it doesn't, I'll do my best not to swear, I promise. I shouldn't be on that. I should be on that pencil. I'm <laughs> pressing bits here, there and everywhere. I'm terrible for not being able to stop. But if we fill this background in black, it will. We can use the the same equivalent pencil in a razor form to take all these um, hairs out to make them stand out more. Yeah, there's hair there that should actually in my head I'm shouting stop <laughs> but my hand is saying different stuff. I think what I'm going to finish up on is using a HB pencil, turn the saturation up a little bit, so we're on 50% there, um, can you see? yeah, change the saturation there. Um, and just go around the outline. It's like I say, I don't expect this to look perfect. Because it by far means doesn't at the minute. But um, I want to at least be satisfied it's good enough. So yeah, if you're an artist and or a budding artist and you you're thinking to yourself, I can't get this right, I can't get that right. That's okay. I don't think an artist ever stops learning. I think if you can admit to yourself that all right, I'm going to carry on learning. I'm going to keep practicing. I'm going to do my best to get better. That is good enough. You've got to keep... Keep yourself happy rather than keeping others happy, be it your 
parents, teachers, whatever they may be. They've got their own opinions, but opinions aren't necessarily facts. I just want to keep drawing, but I know this has been a long video. When I find something that's working, it is really, really hard to stop. I'm going to leave all these extra lines in there. Um, the name of it is going to be sketching, so that'll suit. I just want to do more. <laughs> I just want to do more drawing. But I think I've got to stop there. So next time it will be... If I pull this over. It will be... Intro to... Procreate. Can't even spell. Um... We're going to find a bar now as well. Not necessarily with the same lesson. These will be different lessons. And carry on. It's Martina drawing. And they'll be the next things, I think. Because, as you've seen, I've, I've fallen into doing digital artwork. It can work with, with traditional art, art as well. For example, you could save... Just move that over. You could save this as a picture, get it to the correct size, and then put it on a traditional piece of paper. And use your pencils, your traditional pencils, to turn it into a, a normal drawing. Or a traditional drawing, I should say. I may even consider draw, um, turning one of Martina's into an angel. But that's for another day. Right, so I'll leave it there for today, and I'll talk to you next time.